So our third Cauchy Euler example is going to involve a situation where we have complex roots. So again, as before, we're going to start by assuming a solution and then taking our derivatives our second derivative uh, n n minus 1 x to the n minus 2 and then we're going to plug these into our equation And when we combine our x powers of x, x squared, x to the n minus 2, we get x to the n. And distributing our n terms. And then 3n x to the n. And 5x to the n. And we factor out our x to the n. And we're left with n squared, 3n minus n is 2n plus 5. And so our auxiliary equation is n squared plus 2n plus 5. And that is the condition we need to satisfy. That's what we need to be equal to 0 in order to solve the equation. Now. Uh, if you look at this for a couple of seconds, you're going to discover that um, it doesn't factor. And so uh, sometimes you'll get real solutions when you uh, don't get a factorable equation, but sometimes, as in our example here, we're going to get complex solutions. And real solutions are messy, but they behave just like two distinct real roots, even when they're integers. Uh, but when they're complex, we have to... Uh, modify the solution a little bit in order to get our result. So in order to find the solution, we are going to use the quadratic equation. And so we have n is equal to, well, negative b is going to be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared is 4 minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c, which is 5, all divided by, make sure this is outside our square root, all divided by 2 times a, which is 1. And if we do a little bit of the math, we discover that negative 2 plus and minus our square root we get 4 minus 20 which is minus 16 and the square root of negative 16 is going to be plus and minus 4 i and when you're simplifying, keep in mind, the denominator has to divide both terms in the numerator. And so we get negative 1 plus and minus 2i, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. So this is our complex pair of roots. Now, we really only need to worry about one of them, because the other one will behave basically the same. And I don't want to... Um, derive the whole reasoning behind this. Uh, I have a handout on this on my website somewhere. Um, but it involves um, uh, using uh, Euler's equation um, that e to a complex power uh, can be simplified in terms of sine and cosine. 
And so that's what we're going to use. And our, our rule um, for this is going to be uh, based on the fact that uh, we have it's x to a complex power uh, and not e to a complex power. And so we're going to have to convert everything. And then this is going to introduce logs into our expression. Um, this is too much to prove with a short video. Uh, but the general rule turns out to be that um, if your root is in terms of n equals um, lambda plus um, n equals lambda plus mu i, then uh, the solution uh, is going to have to be of the form um, uh, x to the lambda and then cosine mu ln x. And then, of course, that's one solution. And then our second solution will be x c2 x to the lambda sine mu ln x. And um, just to explain slightly, um, let's suppose I had x to the 2i as an example. Then I would have to rewrite this as e to the ln x times the original 2i. So kind of keep in mind, um, we're essentially thinking about rewriting x like so, and then it's still to the 2i. And then we can multiply your powers. E to the 2i ln x. And recall that for Cauchy Euler, uh, for the, sorry, the Euler equation, you get cosine. And then the thing that goes in the um, cosine function is everything but the i that's in the exponent. So 2 ln x. So remember here, 2 is our mu function. And i sine 2 ln x. Uh, the real part of the equation is just factored out. And as I said before, the um, the positive solution and the negative solution only vary by a coefficient, and um, the problem ends up getting simplified out. So our solution is then um, y of x is equal to c1 x to the negative 1. cosine 2 ln x plus c2 x to the negative 1 sine 2 ln x. And as with other Cauchy Euler equations, you can then check the Ronskian. Um, and in this case, 
the Wronskian would turn out to be after much simplification, negative two x to the negative three. Again, give or take a sign, depending on the order you put these in the, the matrix. Uh, and you can, of course, using uh, product rules and chain rules, verify that this will satisfy the original differential equation by um, simplifying out to zero, as it should. But our solution then is this problem right here, where negative one goes in the exponent and two becomes the coefficient of the log x inside our two trig functions. And notice that the coefficient here too goes outside the log, not inside the log, but inside the trig function.